Hey guys, welcome back to the Past Money Plan. Uh, today we're going to be talking about the second point on this uh, segment, which is up here. Gen Zers think their home will cost 38.5% less than the U.S. median household or U.S. median home value of $363,300. So if I'm understanding this correct, it sounds like they're having wish prices. So I, I mean... Depending on what they were thinking, maybe they had some strategy on how to get that to happen. But it sounds like they're hoping for a lower price. And I have heard people talk like that. So, Kirby, what do you what do you expect out of this? Well, one thing I want to know is where did they do this poll at? I mean, if they did this poll in in uh, Grove Hill, Alabama, it makes sense. <laughs> did this, if this, they did this in uh, a major area, I mean, hell, Detroit or New York, it don't make sense. If you, you just got the top 20 major metropolitan areas in the United States, it don't make sense. I mean, especially, I mean, I, I'm going to guess whoever did the survey went to some of these metro major metropolitan areas and then the people that they survey is just ignorant of what the housing market is like or what the costs are or what the prices are right now so they surveyed people that was blind deaf and dumb or like i said five years from now they probably not even looking they just threw a, a incredible number out there but i can't see nobody i can't see nobody doing this survey in new york and a citizen in New York saying, "Oh, a house is going to cost me less than, you know, let's say four hundred thousand or three seventy five. I don't see that in California. No parts of California really. Um, Dallas area be hard, hard pressed to find people there. Hawaii, that's a whole, another instance altogether. So I don't, I don't see that happening. No, but like we talked in the previous video, it comes down to where. I mean." Every market, we always talk about the median home price on a national scale, but there are markets out there that there's houses and a lot of them selling under the national median. I mean, but it's more, like I said in the previous video, it's, uh, I mean, you can, like a place like Oklahoma, you can probably get a house up under the median there. Nice house up under the median, actually. Um, but, I mean... I'm hard pressed to find. I'm hard pressed to find a house under the median here in Florida. Period. Just hard pressed to find it. I mean, I can find it, but it won't be moving ready. It's going to be some work that needs to be done, or it's going to be a house that you know, 70, 80 years old, that's probably on its last leg. That's just, and you're gonna to have to go in there and put a lot more into the house to, and then you're gonna be all in for four or five hundred thousand after you get all the repairs for it. So. But every market is local. Um, could is it possible? Yeah, but it's not probable at the trajectory we're at now to get to that on a national scale below the median. A lot of things that are uh, that will have to happen. And the number one thing is the interest rate will have to get. I say five at least. It'll have to get five sub five percent on the interest rate to have. Star home buyers move up to a bigger home. That's that's one thing. The inventory will have to flood back on the market, but we need interest rates to drop because so many people locked in at two, three, four percent. The interest rates will have to drop, and then it'll have to be a mass move up in buyer. And then I could see that happen because there's more supply than demand. We need a recession, a strong recession to happen, and people can't uh, afford their homes. We would need a big foreclosure crisis. So I'm just adding things in there. We need this and we need this and we need this combined with this. So to get to that price point on a national level and have a lot of houses being sold, it will need a lot of dominoes that have to fall to make that happen. Could could that happen? Yeah. Do I see that happening? No. And the reason why, like I said, people are locked in the super low interest rates. They could just stay there for cheap instead of moving or doing anything else. Now you have the, you have the, you know, different situations or different uh, people have their own personal issues, maybe lose a job or something. 
But then we got to add in the foreclosure rate will have to increase dramatically also. So that's another domino that I have to fall for to get a mass number of 45 percent of millennials in houses, you know, below the median. What you got? Yeah, it, those are good points. Um, I know from conversation with people here in Florida, um, it wasn't too long ago when we saw decent home prices. And so if this was like a survey done in maybe a state like Florida and people have those hoping and wishing prices for those prices to come down, because I've heard all kinds of ideas of people thinking that you know the home that the housing market here, here in Florida is overvalued that it's going to come back down that it has to but you know the reality is that as you said you know these it would take a lot for the houses to come down in prices again and mm -hmm. this is the new market that's set i think it's unrealistic this point right here that 38 that it'll cost 38.5% less unless they're looking in you know a completely remote location mm -hmm. I mean, Atlanta, Georgia, if you look at Atlanta, Georgia, we bring up Georgia, but if you just bring up a major hub like Atlanta, Atlanta, Georgia, to get a nice house in a nice neighborhood, you know, three, two, decent size, you know, maybe a front yard, backyard, you paying, you paying all of the median to get there. Right. I mean, it, it's, I mean, but in that same breath, in Georgia and you know the rural areas to the left and the right of Atlanta, south, north of Atlanta. You can you can get a house for below the median. Do forty five percent of millennials? Uh, I think millennials are. I mean, I think millennials. I think my generation. I think they they are uh, blind to reality. I think millennials are more blind to reality because they believe one hundred percent of what's on social media. Uh, so that it's. I'm not gonna say it's concerning. I just look at it as it gives my kids opportunity to battle against the ignorant and it'll be an easy win for them because we live in reality. And reality is the price is not going down until major catastrophic events happen across the board. And then the truth of that is if we get all of the events that I said need to happen to get home prices down, you will have people like Alex going there buying all the houses first it still won't be room for the uh, millennial buyer to yeah. to get the house. So, I mean, people need to readjust their shot groups a little bit. I mean, is it possible? Yeah, probable. No, I don't believe. Um, but the the key of it all is the housing market is broken, and what what really broke the housing market and uh, Michael Zuber said it best was keeping the interest rates so low for so long after COVID, it locked people into situations that it would be stupid for them to get out of financially. They would have to be absolutely stupid to get out of this windfall that they received from the federal government. I mean, just think 2%, I wish I could get a property for 2% interest. And so the, the entry level, the move up buyer, all that is broken and the house that's going on the market for sale is extremely stretched. And the only people that's moving in them is people that have the money. Now it's a handful of people that have the money to do it, but it's not a it's not on a 45% of millennial scale that have the money to do it. So that's why I believe that the number is way off the mark. Right. With all that being said, guys, if you like this video, hit the like button. Uh, leave a comment down below, share this video, subscribe, and we'll see you guys in the next one.